this is Tony. This is Paul coming at you from the Friends for Life podcast. And we're a go. Hey guys, thanks for joining us again at the Friends for Life podcast. We have a special guest today by the name of Michael Malone. Uh, we dive in from when he was a DSP up to now in his retirement. So stay tuned and enjoy. But Michael, come on, tell us um, uh, tell us a little, tell the listeners a little bit about yourself and um, how you got in the field of work. Okay. Uh, well, uh, I had a sister uh, that was born with Down syndrome. Uh, back in the mid '60s, um, she was, uh, uh, and back then, uh, you were told put to your put her away. Uh, she'll never amount to anything. And at that point, uh, uh, terribly enough, individuals with, with uh, Down syndrome were referred to as mongoloids. Yes, I, um, I, I terrible, remember. Terrible name. The so, history name. Of um, I remember, you know, uh, my my mother and my father struggled a great deal with this. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, besides uh, having Down syndrome, as, as a lot of individuals do, she had some medical concerns. She had a weak heart and so on. Um, so long and short of it is uh, she ended uh, – we were able to have her live at Sunshine um, in the mid-60s. And that's when Sunshine was a house. And that's yeah. all it was. And the Engel family, that's what, you know, that was their passion. Mm-hmm. So she she lived there. Um, she lived, um, she only lived for uh, two and a half to three years and then had some heart conditions and passed away. So oh, that was when I was in still, still in grade school. So uh, people like to relate back to that to say, well, you got into the field because of your sister. And I said, not really. Mm-hmm. Um, it did open up my eyes that there are people that are different. Uh, and so there is that population. So when I was in high school, um, they had a wonderful volunteer program through Sunshine. Mm -hmm. Um, And I spent four years volunteering uh, at Sunshine. Uh, We'd go once a week or twice a week, whatever, and uh, opened my eyes even further. And at that point, Sunshine was more children than, you know, we're we're talking, you know, uh, what I said, 30 plus years, 30, 35 plus years ago. So uh, I did that, and then uh, I thought, okay, what am I going to do uh, going to uh, as far as education? I thought, mm-hmm. I enjoy this. Uh, you know, maybe I'll be a teacher. So I went to TU. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Not ma- to be confused with Tony University, <laughs> <Yeah>. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and majored in special education slash uh, elementary education. So okay. it was kind of a dual role. Gotcha. Uh, so I had to do two separate student teachings. Mm-hmm. In my freshman year, uh, my first quarter, my father passed away. Oh, man. Um, so little adjustment. You know, my sister, my sister and brother were off at college, so I, I was with my, with my mother. So I never, you know, lived in a dorm or did any of that. So I went and did – took me about four and a half to five years to, to get my degree. Mm-hmm. I did two student teachings. And I remember that after I was done with my second one, I was ready to graduate. You know, the professor pulled me in, and, and uh, we had a conversation. He said, yeah, have you ever thought of a different career? And I thought, I mean, besides teaching? And he said, yeah. I said, you're not probably going to make a very good teacher. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Talk about being blunt. <laughs> right. <laughs> I said, okay, but I just spent four and a half years for a career, for, so yeah. what do I do now? So I, I uh, you know, I was a bit stunned. Um, I also noticed at that point when I did my, my student teaching for uh, special education, uh, the special ed class was in the basement. Mm-hmm. It was in the corner. It was next to the boiler room. And there was very oh, wow. little interaction. Um, it was those kids down there. And, and you know, there's something, you know, it's the, the stigmas. Yeah. There's something uh, why they were down there. But what it did show me is that, that we had <clears> – <throat> You know, as far as educating, we had them for th- uh, anywhere from three to six hours a day. And so what happens the other times? Where do they go? Well, there are residential centers and other places. At that time, uh, NODC, Northwest Ohio Developmental Center, was opening. And I said, well, let's give it a shot. Right. Uh, so I applied, and uh, I, was, uh, uh, I was hired. And what you will find, and I don't know whether you found this, Tony, but a lot of us that are, are have been in this profession for a long time, a lot of us started at NODC. Yeah. Uh, that's where we got our feet wet. You know? Gotcha. Um, and at that point, it was closing down state um, 
state institutions mm-hmm. that were just terrible, you know, 200, 300 people on a, uh, you know, in a, in a building, right. and, uh, you know. You know like the, the Willowbrook type Yes, of exactly. And that's scenarios. what was going on. So Ohio came up with this, okay, let's do, let's do residential centers. Let's do mm-hmm. uh, um, something that's a little bit less. Uh, and uh, uh, so that's what they did. There were uh, eight cottages. Uh, there, 16 in each cottage. And since it was brand new, they opened them slowly. And yeah, it yeah. depended upon the acuity level and the age of which people ended up in what cottage. Mm-hmm. Um, so I ended up in what was 607, um, you know, and, and we did all the, uh, any of the ADLs that needed to be done. Um, there was a building across that had a pool. So, uh, so I worked there for, <coughs> um, for a couple of years. Um, and then uh, being a, <clears throat> at that per time, a young person uh, uh, had a disagreement on, on uh, practices and policies with my boss. Oh, I've um, been there. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. Feeling. Which wasn't the, and and uh, said, well, fine, if that's the way it is, then I quit and went home oh. and went, uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> like you didn't I don't have a, I, I don't have a job. <laughs> I better do something. Well, uh, I had a friend uh, that uh, was in the fish business, and I worked at a fish market for six months. Wow, talk about a different yeah. ch- uh, chain of yeah. events. There's nothing like walking into a fish market at <laughs> seven thirty in the morning. Wow. Mm. The smell never yes. leaves. But he helped. I mean, he helped me out. I worked. You know, it wasn't it wasn't a job that he gave me, and at that time. Um, I noticed that there was some construction going on on Hollandsylvania Road, and I would go past that and see the construction. And finally, they put up a sign, uh, Josina Lott Foundation. And I thought, mm-hmm. that's interesting. I wonder what that's all about. It said something about disabilities and residential and whatever. So I drove down the driveway, filled out an application in, uh, uh, in the summer of 1979. Uh, wow. And that's where my career has been since that time. Um, wow. We opened up uh, uh, We opened up in, well, I started in July of 1979, and our first individuals moved in in September. So we had a few months to get together, program plans, mm-hmm. set the buildings up, and things like that. So what we, what we received uh, were Which, people. Which, if I can, w- real quick, Please. Michael. Everyone, this is very difficult. <laughs> it yeah. is not easy to open that many places, even when you think you have everything planned, yes. because no one's in there yet. Right. And then that's going to really tell whether your practices and your um, policies and procedures are really going to work or or not work. Exactly. So, yeah, please continue. Yep. I'm, I'm, I'm just taken aback by yep. it, especially with the year. You said back in the 70s, right. like— Goodness. Well, there's a, there was a group of parents that got together, and I, and I, and I uh, Fred and Judy Flesher, who were our founding founding uh, parents. They had they had two boys that were uh, developmentally disabled, and they wanted a better life for them. Um, you know, the, the uh, NODC was big, over 100 people. They wanted something a little bit more home like, mm-hmm. so they came up with this wonderful idea. Um, and if you ever get a chance, um, there is. Uh, on YouTube, when we did our 40th anniversary, it's called "What's in a Name." And it's "What's in a Name," and you can find it under Manahan. But it it did a really good job of talking about before, mm-hmm. uh, current, and future. It's it was done very well. It was done by a, a, a gentleman in town um, that did a great job of the video. It's about 13 minutes long. But Fred and Judy gathered their friends who also had children. Uh, with disabilities, and remember that was the time where you kept them at home and you didn't take them anywhere yeah. because mm-hmm. people would point and say different things. So they, they, their social group ended up being uh, others who had children with with disabilities too. So they, mm-hmm. you know, he was a very uh, he owned Colonial Builders. He was a very forceful man, and he looked at people and said, "You'll be my accountant. You'll be my attorney." Yeah, you know, and, <laughs> and they they didn't really have a, any ability to say no. So they put <laughs> they put that together in the early '70s, '73, '74, nice. and then they opened up the facility, found the dollars to do it. Uh, they were funded through the state halfway, and then they had to raise the other half. Within the video, it talks about it was about a 1.2 million dollar project. 
They got six hundred thousand oh. dollars from the state and had to come up with another six hundred thousand. So, and they raised that. So, uh, but he was he was probably that that person that went to lunch and said, "By the time we're done here, you'll write me a check, and, and here's how much you're going to write." Right. He was that type of person. So, uh, I, I knew it. Fred. I met Fred. And I, I had a great deal of respect for for Fred. Um, so we did that, uh, you know, and then as things progressed, uh, those buildings were originally built to have a mini apartment in them. Mm. So it was a, a bathroom and a uh, bedroom and like a living room. So we lived, if you lived in those buildings. At that point, the acuity level was very high of in, with the individuals. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, they were moving through the system and, uh, uh, you know, saying something like, okay, it's, it's uh, in 15 minutes, it'll be six o'clock, take your bath, do this, do that. And it was done. Yeah. You know? And you went by and did something else. Very, very mm-hmm. different from now. Yeah. Um, and those are the people that continued to move into less restrictive and ended up living in their own houses, their own apartments. Mm-hmm. And back then it was called semi-independent living. Yeah. Uh, a little bit of purchase of services homes and group homes started to pop up around there too. So, mm-hmm. uh, so you know, I, I did that. Uh, you know, grew through being a DSP and a supervisor and a Q. And then uh, in the mid-90s I became the executive director. Um, and uh, I've been doing nice. that for a little over 20 years. Um, and, uh, we've, uh, I think we've created, uh, I, I hope I'm living it, uh, leaving a good, good blueprint for the next person, gotcha. um, you know, pick up the directions and, and, you know, go and do that. And yep. I know, and I've had a lot of time to reflect, obviously, since I've decided I was going to retire and, and had conversations with people, you know, it, it's the old to the new, and I'm not saying as far as age, but, you know, things were different. Yeah. And, and things are very different now. Yeah, and, it's just and, a way of doing and, things. Yeah. And we need to, you know, the old um, and, and the new one, we need to move in. The services that uh, that we deliver are different. Yeah. Uh, we're finding out things about dementia. With We never thought we would find any of that out with right. individuals with disabilities. Um, you know, we're, we're really recognizing people more and more now for their skills. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to teach them skills, but they've... But, but they already have them. So mm-hmm. let's capitalize on those skills. Um, and, um, you know, and I can, unfortunately, you know, in, in 2021, there are still people that you see when you go, you know, when you go out that will go to the other side of the room or mm-hmm. cross the street or, and, and that is, you know, it's 2021. Uh, yeah, it's, it, like, it, it's not, it's not the sixties. But then I think back, you know, there's a lot of things that, that have grown over, over the years, but if you look back when we really started to address uh, and get a better life for individuals with disabilities, it was in it was in the early fifties. Mm-hmm. You know, that's only seventy years ago. Yeah, I mean that's really and not we, that long ago. We we just did um, one of our midweek minis in which we discussed um, the the topic of Have you seen Crip Camp yet? Mm-mm. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Yes, I did. It's wonderful. Yes. Yeah. yes. We, oh, my goodness. Um, it was a hidden gem for us. Yes. Like, I didn't understand, like, how I didn't, especially in the midst of yeah. COVID, how, how we missed that. Yep. And um, it just, the it, the emotion behind the, the tactics that the people were using, I thought were, I mean— we we should look at that today. Yes. And if we want our causes to to remain um, relevant yes. in the world, yep. we need to act like that. Yeah. But I, I thought that was really done re- because that's that was you know they were crips. Well, there's a crip. Yeah. There's a crippled. <laughs> right. You know, it's, I, and that the, I, I I thought that was very well done. Very phenomenal. Yeah. Well, you yeah. what you've been you've been working in the field basically since your whole career it yes. seems like so that's that's something for me that's very interesting to see the changes so do you have any like insight on on what's significant changes that you've noticed say starting in the 70s till now i mean things have come a long way but is there anything that's really like this was a monumental impact in the disability field um i i think they happen slowly um, you know, this this whole new, not new, but the thing with DSPs, direct support professionals. Um, I was a caseworker. I was a resident advisor. We took it after like uh, a college, a college dorm. So we called ourselves resident advisors yeah. when we first started. Uh, but uh, I think slowly um, uh, some of the funding, I think, has made some big differences. I, I think mm-hmm. if it would be one monumental thing, it would be the uh, – 
the reimbursement and the recognition of in order to do this and to provide a better life, we need to have a little bit more reimbursement. We need to be innovative of how we can get the dollars to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and we need to make sure that those dollars continue. Um, and we need to advocacy. Advocacy is, a, is another huge thing that's happened. Um, not only that that for people that work in the in uh, that work in the field, but the individuals themselves, um, who are now standing up and being advocates and saying, you know, this is what I want. I don't like this. Um, everybody should be able to live wherever they want. Yes, w that would be wonderful. Yeah. Uh, there has to be some realistic things in there too. Mm -hmm. um, for you know, you can't afford to live in that in that four bedroom house by yourself. So let's let's help them be more realistic on what their goals are. And I think uh, we've we've been doing that. You know, with, with yeah. person centered planning and all of that, you know, it's, you have to ask, you know, what do you want to do? <clears throat> Excuse me. This is, these are all the things we can do today. <clears throat> Which one of these do you want to do? So, and I think you could do that with any, anyone, but nothing that was like, oh, this, this really changed things. Just slowly people recognizing more and more uh, that these are people, individuals, and should be treated the same. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, the, the residence right statement, you know, to yeah. actually have to come up with a residence right statement that mirrors, yeah. you know, <laughs> that mirrors the Constitution. Constitution. We yeah. have to do that for a separate, you know, that they have the right to do this and the right to do that. It's like it, we had to do that because they weren't mm -hmm. getting those rights. Uh, so uh, and now they do. Now it's part of every person centered plan. plan yeah. Yep. yeah. So. Um, and I'm, I'm sure you've seen about the mayor's um, the mayor's office. For disability and stuff now, you know, the, all those things, um, just to piggyback off what you said, are those continued efforts, um, I think, by, you know, um, at least our wonderful city. I think Toledo is doing a great job, um, and we'll just see where it continues to go from there. Has he tapped you? Do you, do you have any connections with him? I'm trying, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I look at the list and, and I've known some people that have been involved with that. And, yeah. and uh, it would be nice. And, and I don't know who listens to this, but if anybody can go to the mayor, you need to have people that have been doing this that are providers, that are mm -hmm. good providers in order to uh, in order to help them. Tim Harrington's retiring. Yeah. Yeah. There's so the, the huge advocate. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, shout out to you, Tim, wherever you wherever you may be. Um but uh, he's he's been there too, yeah. uh, and I know that he's. So let's not lose focus, guys. Of that, we if we're going to do this for disabilities in, in Toledo and make it what it should be, mm -hmm. then let's make sure we're talking to the right people. So, exactly. Yeah. It's you, you, we got to go up the up the chain of command, yeah. up the ladder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Michael. Yes. You and I have talked um, before uh, about books. What what are you reading right now? I uh, I I read fiction to, just to be uh, you know uh, mysteries, um, but uh, nothing um, nothing earth shattering. Right. Nothing, <laughs> probably um, nothing that I will read. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> yeah, um, uh, right now, I'm reading the uh, the John Lennon book um, okay. that which just came out around Christmas time. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember what the name of it is, but it's <laughs> it, it's written as such from uh, through his assassination. Am um, I mistaken? Isn't there a new song that he has out? Like they redid a video or did something. They? Oh, that'd be great. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, there was an old song um, that they recorded way back, and they redid a video. Um, sorry, that's all right. <laughs> I, I no. digress. No. <laughs> so, so that's I. You know, I. I there's so much information we are bombarded with on a day-to-day -day basis oh, man. that we need to keep up with. That you know, sometimes I just want to go home. You know, I read the paper, I keep up on local news and things like that. But mm -hmm. uh, I read more for relaxation than information. You know, you I don't go. know whether that's good or bad. I yeah, shit. I mean, I don't know. I I, I relax when I read something because I'm zoned into it. Like because everything that I read is so like mental, mentally engaged. Mm -hmm. I can put everything else out of the world. Yeah. So my wife yelling at me, I don't hear that. My kids <laughs> kicking and screaming, I won't hear that. <laughs> All I will hear is yeah. dinner time. Oh, okay. <laughs> there is there is one thing that I've really uh, I've really enjoyed. He wrote a book uh, is uh, uh, Dan Rather has a uh, what's called Steady. Uh, and mm -hmm. it's uh, it's like a he does a weekly thing. You can subscribe to it, but it's very interesting to get his 
outlook on things from, I mean, he was a reporter in the Vietnam War and still has a great deal of respect. So it's, so it's interesting to read his, uh, well, they're not daily, but his, his by every other day he comes up with something that he can, he pulls from his book mm-hmm. um, and other things and then he opens it up to the forum and he says, these are the rules. If you don't follow the rules, you're out of here. I wa- he wants open communication, doesn't care what it's about, but you can't, yeah. you know, uh, uh, mm-hmm. you know, get down on anybody, no bully, none of that. And he said, if you do, you won't be on the thing. So the re- some very interesting topics right. and conversations that go back and forth. And uh, it, it gives you hope, you know. Uh, sometimes uh, you lose hope about people. This really says, you know, yeah, people are listening. People have good thoughts, and, and we're, we'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> we'll I've, be, uh, we'll I've, be fine. I've always been a huge fan of, of biographies and autobiographies because to me it's like a kind of like a shortcut i started reading them when i was probably like 18 or 19 and it's like these people have already lived a much more experience than me mm-hmm. and i can be like hey this guy i really look up to he's like don't do all this dumb crap that you're doing <laughs> and i'm like i'll try my best like I, <laughs> you know I, so i, I yeah. i'm totally with you yeah. i love biographies and i i love reading even yeah. like lord of the rings and stuff tony's always making fun of me i read it every year i will, yeah. you know, you, I will continue you, that you could read those biographies <laughs> and see where they admit that you know this is what i did wrong this mm-hmm. is what i could have done better mm-hmm. which is sometimes is a blueprint for yourself to say i was was just about ready to go and make that step. I won't now because now I know what would ha- you know what's going to happen. So it's helpful, it's very yeah. helpful. Yeah. You know, and I think you uh, actually you made even a better point like earlier by expressing what you you know you started as a DSP and you worked your way up every single position every um, every step of the way. And I get this frustration in my life where I hear people they don't want to deal with some of the rules and regs that are put together. So they say, oh, I'm going to start my own. And it's like, that's cool. Honestly, we need more people who are going to do it right. But that's the thing. You got to do it right. right. Because if you don't do it right, not only are you going to set yourself up for your business to struggle, Mm -hmm. you're going to leave these individuals in a situation that we hate putting them in. And that's a new staff person, a new provider, a new um, scenario of life. Um, Granted, I think... Everybody can grow from uncomfortability, but we need to realize who are we um, making uncomfortable by us being comfortable. Mm-hmm. I think that that is a very strong way that we need to look at it because sometimes if you're working with an individual who has um, uh, certain issues that you might not be as skilled, this is your problem and your time to have a solution mm-hmm. to that. And make yourself better. Grow. Don't just up and leave like Michael did. Everybody, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Put, put yeah, don't end up in a fish market for six <laughs> months. Trust right. me, you're gonna I, smell. Yeah, I well, but I, I, I did get a taste for oysters when I worked there. there so you. I, <laughs> love, I love good oysters. Now, Were you so. able to get any um, uh, a caviar? No, we didn't do caviar. You didn't. No. Oh man, I, it's horrible to watch it <laughs> get made, mm-hmm. but it, it tastes awesome. We worked with a lot of pickerel. Oh, okay. Walleye. Yeah. And we would clean it and and then uh, fillet it. And we had a machine that you put the fresh on one end, and by the time it came out the other end, it was frozen. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was it was the, as big as the building, so a lot of dry ice. Yeah. <laughs> but the one thing they never told you is it was – there was a, a descaler, and it was a machine, and it had little knobs on it, and it was electric, and you mm-hmm. could scale the – one of the things that – they always got the new person with is they didn't tell you to be careful on the belly. <laughs> so you learned that quickly after you did the belly and you were wearing most of the <laughs> fish. And you look at the other people standing there going, well, we should have told you about that. But it was not, look, not pretty. I, could I be love su- that. Be right tender the on the belly because you know, you're doing the, you know, you turn the fish over and <laughs> boom. And it's like, oh, <laughs> thank you, guys. <laughs> oh, 8 o'clock in the morning, yummy. So, yeah. But I think one of the things that, that one of uh, – that uh, from the beginning and when I was at Josie Lot Foundation and, and, and uh, we worked, you have Medicaid regs, you have DODD regs. And I remember that we always said, here are the regs. This is what you need to do. Mm-hmm. But we're going to do this. Meet the regs, but go, go above and beyond. Well, and go you. above and beyond. These are just things you have to follow in order to stay open and to do all that. Mm-hmm. But you can work off of these and give a better life, enrich a life a, a little bit better by not just – Meeting the minimum, mm-hmm. uh, uh, meet the maximum, and continue to meet that. So that's right. You know, it doesn't. 
you know, I can remember staff saying, well, I can't find in the regs where it says we have to do this every so often. I said, it doesn't. Yeah, so you have to there. do it every quarter, <laughs> but we do it every month because mm-hmm. we want to make sure. Exactly. Those type of things. So, yeah, that's Beautiful. worked out well. That's good management yep. right there. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah. And we just continued to do that. So, yep. When, um, now, for, for our listeners. Yes. You now, uh, well, you were formerly Josina Lott. Now you're Manahan. Mm-hmm. What what actually made you guys want to change the name and you know, like how long was the process and how hard is it? Because it's very hard. Yeah, and uh, if anybody ever wants to change the name of your organization, give me a call. Uh, yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're still struggling. Um, well, uh, we were Josita Lot Residential and Community Services, okay. and we were that. And uh, we're we're going towards our forty years. And what do we need to do? Uh, what do who do? How does the public see us? Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, uh, we we sent out some surveys, h- hired a company to do a simple thing, nothing nothing big, and they and they came back, uh, even with uh, some of the um, parents, they thought we were related to Lot Industries. Yes, mm-hmm. and you're not related to Lot Industries, and I and we would say no, that's. So, well, at one point it was the sheltered workshop, mm-hmm. uh, but no, Josina Lot was a woman, and and uh, we've taken her name. But no, we, we're we're, right. we're residential. They always thought that we were the residential part of Lot Industries. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what? Even when I worked there, I, I thought that because I started with the Lucas County Board of DD um, in transportation. It's funny that you even oh, say oh the transportation department. Oh, yes, <laughs> I'm telling you, I had <laughs> everybody, and my first route was at NODC. Was it really? <laughs> yes. Wow. Um, <clears throat> And at least two of our supervisors or um, um, administrative teams are from NODC as well. Yep. So it is, it's yep. a lot, like you said. But, you know, working throughout that in transportation and, and learning and growing, there was a Josina a lot award mm-hmm. that a lot of industry. I don't know if did a lot, a lot of industries give that out. Or, yes. Okay. Yes. That's what I figured. So yep. I was like, I automatically assumed mm-hmm. because I wanted to win the award. <laughs> yep. I never got it. Yep. But yep. <laughs> I um, I I even had that confusion. So I can see where you're going from. Yep. She and and the and the founding fathers, uh, and mothers, uh, knew her personally, because they were sending their children to her mm. and there's there's more in the video pictures of her and, and uh the lot school she started in her she started in her dining room of her house moved to a church basement wow. and then sooner or later ended up with the schools hefner uh then Jos- uh, then um Josina lot uh, um out in the in Oregon and Lark Lane mm. and all those things so so but that's why why we did it and and uh, so we said all right we need to figure something out here so this is we need our own identity and we had created our, our you know after 40 years we created a pretty good niche for ourselves people mm-hmm. think that we're quality and uh, that was good so we thought and thought and thought about it and came up with the name Manahan because there was a woman by the name of Zepha Manahan. Okay. Um, she had her, uh, her husband's name was Otto. So it was Otto and Zepha Manahan. Zepha was on the original board. Hmm. Um, she had uh, a child with disabilities that, that passed away. So she was an original board member. And when she passed away, she had no family. So oh, wow. she left her trust to us. Um, through the Greater Toledo Community Foundation. Um, so we're able to do some things that we wouldn't be able to do if we didn't have those dollars. Yeah. Um, every year we, we have a, 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 we put in a request for different items. It's over the years been used more of a, for our capital budget. Mm-hmm. Um, renovations of bedrooms, new furniture, new carpet, those type of things. So uh, we looked around and said, you know what? There's a lot of things here that wouldn't be here if it hadn't been for her. So let's let's name it Manahan. Man. Um, that, that's uh, man. Yeah. So hats off. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, I've, one thing I've noticed starting in this field working is you guys all have super long names. You got Friends for Life Residential <laughs> Care, formerly <laughs> just seen a lot. As everybody's got like, a, I'm like looking these up online. I'm like, this isn't going to fit on the screen. Oh, man. <laughs> well, then you've got the acronyms. You know? yeah. oh, I have yeah. a full page and a half of acronyms that I give to my board members when they first when they first start <laughs> yeah. as board members because you're talking about ICFs and DODD mm. and ODH and, and all of these different things, and they're like, what? One of, <laughs> one of our friends, um, Ben, has a, um, a meme going 
messing around with all the acronyms and stuff on it, and I, I made sure that I added some yeah. <laughs> as well because <laughs> yeah. he forgot UI, MUI, yep. uh, pause, you know, a couple yep. of those. Yep. <laughs> MITS, the, the MITS system, yep. yes, all those things. Yeah. It's like talking to someone in the military. They're like, oh, yeah, I just went out of this AUD, <laughs> BMIG. I'm like, what is going on here? I'm, I don't speak in the alphabet. Yeah, yeah, I'm so right. confused. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so, yeah, one thing that we really like to focus on is, you know, especially with with people who've been in the field for a long time, one thing that's really important to us is, like, making change. That's why we started the podcast. That's why we started all these different forms of media. Uh, and we wanted to, like, kind of try and reach out to, like, the digital population of people out there that aren't mm-hmm. aware of this stuff. Is there any any issue that is really, like, sticks out to you that you'd really like to see some some more change in in the disabilities field aside from just the normal stuff like more visibility more more you know dollars and care is there anything that's really like man if i could snap my fingers and this just changed immediately is there anything that you'd really like to see i it, you know it's it's what would flow from that and it's um better reimbursement mechanisms um you know better uh the DSPs are are you know the the make the make the wheels go round and round. Um, mm-hmm. I don't. They're the ones that are the frontline people, and and we need to give them the respect and the dollars to do the to do that job. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've been working on it. I'll tell you, we're a whole lot further than where we were before. Amen. Um, but we need to recognize them and give them the proper tools, which a lot of times is training. Um, in order to do the best job that they, one of the biggest things I don't know whether you, you have it too is you, you never seem to be able to train them to train them enough. Yeah, you know, you yeah. find something. Oh, I forgot that. I really need to teach them mm-hmm. how to do that. So it has to be, almost become muscle memory. And I, I and a lot of people don't realize that they think just because you're caring for someone, like my first time being a dad, I. It, that took a while to get used to. <laughs> like, oh, you mean I have to go to it every time it cries? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, is that really the law? Are you sure? <laughs> so, yes, um, repetitive and re- but also engaging. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a lot of the cookie cu- cutter trainings that we used to have aren't working anymore no. because just like myself, I did not finish traditional school because I didn't learn better that way. I am not a memorizer of tests. I I have a way of doing things that works for me. And if somebody can figure that out, we can always be good team, team players. Um, but if not, I'm not going to register the information that you're giving me. Mm-hmm. It's just like, it's not how I'm built. Yeah. Yeah. We, so, have to de- we have to find how people learn the best, Mm -hmm. you know, and we have to do that for our staff too. You know, I I have staff that you say, go do this and they'll do it. I have staff that I have to draw them a picture and an arrow and point to which direction they need to go. So, you know, you just, that's how you, that's how you need to do it. So, Mm -hmm. by the way, the thing about parents, it continues forever. (laughs) It will go on forever. I thought, I thought we'd be done with this. Nope, you're not. But you're you're 31 years old. (laughs) Yeah, I know. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Yeah. The life of parenthood. Yes, it's, it's great. So, <laughs> um, Have you ever came across a problem that you didn't necessarily know how to handle it right then and it become an MUI, which um, if our listeners don't, don't know what an MUI is, look, um, it's a major unusual incident. And in our field of work, it's something that you don't want a lot of them on the books. <laughs> no. no, not at all. Um, but... Have you had anything, uh, you don't have to go, you know, too deep, um, but anything recently without mentioning COVID, because we're trying to get away from that whole COVID crap. Um, Oh, yeah. Yeah. But anything that you had to go back to your rules and reg and like, okay, like we have to change this. This is outdated. Um, No, but I think um, we need to take a closer look at um, sometimes language. Mm Mm-hmm between people can be misconstrued. Yes. I can come around the corner and hear you say some things that aren't very nice to somebody, Mm -hmm. but I don't know what happened beforehand, and I don't know whether you're playing with them and having a great time. But Mm -hmm. from my coming around the corner, you're, you know, you're, you're, not you're bullying them. You're not being very nice. Um, So I think we need to, to uh, look at that and, and, 
not only the person that comes around the corner and says, why did you say that? But the other person said, oh, well, you know, this is what we do and sometimes, but yeah, maybe this time I went over, you know, just a little and, mm-hmm. and that, those type things. But nothing really seriously. Okay. Um, luckily, knock on wood, um, you know, the, the hospitalizations and things like that. But uh, the interactions between staff and individuals, uh, we really more, you know, that's the training thing. Yeah. You know, we really, because mm-hmm. uh, uh, some people you can say something to and, and they laugh it off. Other people think you're serious and you hurt their feelings. feelings right. <laughs> <laughs> and we're all like that. Yeah, yeah, it, it all it, depends it, upon the day. You, you, you almost have to feel people out before you even know exactly what and how to say. Mm-hmm. And, you know, not everyone has that talent yeah, or exactly. were even raised that yeah. way. Um, I personally, one of the things that got me through being a DSP is I didn't do anything without asking the individual. Right. Like I seriously would not even go use their bathroom unless, you know, I asked first. Right. And, you know, it, yeah, it could get repetitive, um, especially if you work with somebody for years upon years. But, mm-hmm. you know, until they say, you know, I told you, you don't have to ask me. You can just go. Mm-hmm. Then. Cool. Now I feel comfortable. I'm but, still, because I'm in your house and I'm still a guest, even though I'm working, I'm yep. still going to say, hey, I'm going to the restroom, just FYI. Well, and that's that's something that I've, I'm glad I, I started working with Tony directly because as just for yesterday, I went to a client's house to film something and I said, you know, hey, what what don't you want me to do? And he said, you know, he's like, yeah, you just make yourself at home. And then we start filming. I was like, is there anything you want to show me? He goes, I don't want you to film my house. So like all my plans, for, all my plans went out the window. I was like, well, I guess I'm done. I don't know. I was like, but you know, it's yeah. his place. Yeah. I can't. I, if someone mm-hmm. came into my house and I said, don't go in that bedroom, but hey, I don't want you yeah. to go in there. Yeah. So it's really because it, you can't just because you're taking care of someone doesn't mean you're just like ah, don't listen to him. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's his house. It's, it's his home. It's if, his home. If he yep. says don't go in there. Yep. If he wants to show me, that's fine. He showed me a bunch of cool stuff he had and in his living room. But other than that, he was like, stay out. Yep. Like, you yep. got it. And you never know what you're going when you go walk into something that Yo. you won't yeah. be able to erase. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I've always, you know, I've always said that that uh, I work at 120 South Island, Pennsylvania. That's where 33 uh, individuals with disabilities live. Mm-hmm. I happen to have an office there too. Mm-hmm. But but first and foremost, it's where they live. Yeah, and I need to home. respect that. Um you know, way back when we built an administrative building, because mm-hmm. when we built the residences, there were offices in the residences, and so we needed to build. You know, we needed to build the office, an office building, to get the offices out of there. It's really trying to focus on this is their home. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. um, and and uh, we have to allow them. You know, we we have two people in a bedroom working on that, um, and they share a, a pod area, uh, two bedrooms two people in each bedroom with a connected bath. But, um, you know, single rooms would be wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's, that's what we're really going to aim for, and I hope that that happens. But it's their home. Yeah. You know, and, and when we're going to decorate something, we need to ask them. We redid our, uh, our wing that's for non-ambulatory oh, really? um, 10 years or so ago. Okay. Uh, it wasn't functional. Um, mm. So when we said, sat down and had meetings, we included the individuals. To say, Very what do you want? Mm-hmm. One of the biggest things was, I hate when third shift comes in and they turn on the lights. Oh. <laughs> because that, the then worst? that wakes me up. So what we did was we put a, a, a smaller light above each bed. So when they're checking on somebody in, on third shift, they could turn the light off just over the bed, not in the ceiling. So mm-hmm. things like that, that, you know, it's your home. What makes you happy? Uh, some other, you know, minor things, color. Uh, mm-hmm. furniture selection, all that. You have to include, we always try to include them and the staff uh, because what would make your job easier? What tools do you need to work mm-hmm. with somebody uh, that's non-ambulatory? What do you need? It would be great if we could have a ceiling lift. So we put ceiling Ceiling lifts throughout both both of the rooms. So you've got to take, you know, the tools for the staff Mm -hmm. and it's your home. What do you what do you need? Mm -hmm. Look, that I love the point about turning on the lights because I'm like, a, you know, if you put it's almost if you do that to me, it's like putting a cross on the exorcist. (laughs) And it's like, (laughs) why? what are you doing? (laughs) You know, oh, please. Yeah. Like. Yep. And, and again, those things are common thoughts yep. that we don't think about because we're, quote unquote, working mm-hmm. versus um, actually caring, I guess. Yep. I'm trying to figure out a, a nice way to phrase it so people can understand, because though it is still is a job, we have to still care mm-hmm. and 
um, have some compassion, I guess, to people's feelings and desires. Right. That you're, you know, think about if that is how you would react to your, your mother, grandmother, uncle, aunt, whatever. Mm-hmm. Is that how you would respond to them? Well, no. Well, then don't respond to that person. My granny like and my that. mama would have threw a shoe <laughs> yeah. at me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the light. exactly. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. No, think about caring for your grandparents or whatever. That's what you're doing. Give them the best possible care you can. That's right. So, my man. Well, guess what, people? It's time for. Rapid fire. <laughs> I love rapid fire. This is the favorite part of the show. Yeah, oh, I, I really I enjoy it because yeah, I, I got no, uh, <laughs> I didn't get any warning on this one. I That's prepared. why it's so fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, we're going to start off with a very easy, quick one. Um, okay. What's your favorite restaurant? In Toledo? Uh, uh, anywhere. Okay. But Toledo is uh, cool. We'll go with Toledo. Um, and I just forgot the name of it. Oh, my God. It's new. It's downtown. It's, it's not favorite. From, it's, it's cost <laughs> from the farmer's market. Uh, brand new. Oh, Let me look a, it up online. Please. Yes, look it up brand online. Brand new. Do you have a ref- point of reference of what it could potentially be called? The rest. What of kind of food do they serve? Uh it's a it's a mix of everything. Oh, okay. Um, so American. <laughs> uh, oh, he's a well known restaurant, and I'm sorry if, if anybody's listening to this. Well known restaurateur, Leaf and Seed, no. Grumpy's, Adam Street Cafe, <sighs> Fallen Good. Fodder, Giorgio's, Brim back. House, Downtown Johnny's, Ice, Real Seafood, South Mediterranean, Holy Toledo. Uh, Holy Toledo. I'm running oh, out. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I know. Hold on. Did City you have Egg? Uh, why am I not? Why is this not coming up to me? Uh, we, open table. Everybody, if you can't tell, we really yeah. like food. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like hungry the, right uh, now. Yeah, just thinking is, about yeah. it. This is serious, yeah, so we need glass. to know this. I'm going to open table. <laughs> come on, come um, on, come on. Here it is. Good job, Michael. Thank you. Uh oh. Ooh, if you can get his glass. <laughs> <Take my glasses. laughs> That'd work well. All right, there we go. All right, let me see. Uh, First uh, long-term rapid fire, everybody. Uh, sorry, <laughs> it's not very rapid fire, is it? Right. All right. That's okay. No, we'll live. Oh, it's the There's information street. that we need. There's just cool course. music playing right now, so yeah. nobody will oh, even Oh, good. Knows. I'm glad. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm looking at all of these oh, restaurants. I think we need it's to... brand new. Turks, oh, Turks Roost. You know what? If they're brand new, they're probably... Uh, well, hopefully, come on, people. You, you got to make it easier for us to find you. <laughs> yeah, really. I can I can go there right now. I got it on the up. map. I don't know what's up Search. here. Erie Street I, Market, Toledo Farmers Market. Sook. Sook Mediterranean. There it is. Okay. Yeah. Sook Mediterranean Kitchen and Bar. That sounds oh, awesome. Nice. Yep. If you have not been there, it is it's one of those. Uh and I'm glad that you guys like to like to go out to eat. We love going out to dinner. Yeah. Um uh, my son is uh uh <coughs> is a Works at uh, Fifth Street Pub in Perrysburg. Oh, oh nice. nice. Uh, he's, he's been doing that for quite some time. So, yeah, we're a family that loves to go out to eat. Nice. But Sook Mediterranean, it's one of those two to three hour, just relax and eat your way through the through the day. I um, it. Everything's fresh. And, um, you know, it's a smaller menu. Mm. So it's not like here's eight pages and you figure it's and he does a very good job. So yeah, <laughs> that's so, nice. So I wonder if I'll get a gift certificate for this if anybody hears it. So yeah, was, <laughs> yeah please send, send it as many gift certificates as you can. <laughs> yeah, Indian, uh, so Indian, uh, all Silk Mediterranean and bar. Wonderful. <laughs> Toledo does place. have some good restaurants. They've got excellent. They've, yeah. I've been to a lot of places and and. You know, especially those touristy places. Yes. I'm like, this don't even compare. Right. It's just yeah. junk. <laughs> yeah, but. There's okay. another new place downtown. I haven't been there yet, and it's uh, it's called uh, a Firefly. Okay. Uh, it's across from. It's where the old shared studios used to be. Oh, really? Yeah. It's a it's a little more upscale drink. Yeah, uh, drink bar. I want to say isn't it next to where Jazz was then? Uh, uh, it's across the street from um, the um, Frickers. Frickers. Okay, yep. yep, it was Frickers. I'm yep. sorry. I know it was one yep. of those so, mean joints. Another place to go in into. So have to check nice, it out. Nice. Yep. All right. Favorite movie of 2020. Since we're all stuck at home most of the time. What did we see in 2020? Yeah, they they released a whole lot of stuff um, at home. I know. We um, I can't. Re- I'm going to come up with the wrong name. Uh, was it called the the Miami Four? Or mm-hmm. the one that took place with it was kind of fictional with Muhammad Ali. Oh, Malcolm X. Yes. And um, uh, um, the, um, uh, our the singer. Yes. Yeah, I know exactly what yep. you're talking about. Yep. Martin Luther King. Yep. Yep. One night yeah. in Miami. One night in Miami. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Was, I heard that was good. Yeah, I need to was. watch it. It's uh, yeah, it's a sit down and and really take everything in and listen. Uh, yeah. Because you, you never thought, and it's sort of 
actual, but you, but putting those four people in the same room at the same time. One was Jim Jim Brown, oh, James nice. Brown, the football player. Mm-hmm. Putting those four in the same same room with the conversations they had was just it was an, an incredible. It was I very bet. good. Oh my yeah. goodness! Well, um, last but not least, the first place vacation that you're going on in retirement. Oh, uh, I'm going up north to play a little golf. There you with, go. See, uh, back yeah. to the golf. Back yeah, to the golf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's it's called uh, Loon Loon Golf Resort. And there's about 14 of us that go up and okay. play play golf three days, and then and after that, uh, uh, we're gonna go and spend some time up north. We like to to vacation in uh, Petoskey, Charlevoix, Traverse City, that area, oh, that, north, that part of northern Michigan that nobody really yeah. knows exists. My, my my wife loves going to Beaver Island. Well, yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, right off of Charlotte. You know, yeah. if many times that we've gone, we've never never gone really? to Beaver Island. Oh, yeah. go because we stay. We we'll, we'll t- typically stay in Charlevoix for maybe you know a couple days. Yeah. You know, eat up and down the streets, yep. but then you go to Beaver Island and it is an oasis away from everything. Is it really? Yeah. You, I mean, it's Do you spend so, the day there? Uh, we spent a week. like On Beaver Island? Yes. Really? It's like if you're going to go, I mean, that's the only place that I think you can go and actually shut everything off. Nice. And it gets to the point you're almost tired of waving because everyone's so damn <laughs> friendly. <laughs> like you would drive through and drive around and it's nothing more than, if I'm mistaken, I hope I'm not mistaken, um, 52... Uh, like f- 52 square miles uh, of land there. Wow. So, but yeah, you go, everybody's super friendly. Yeah. Um, Interesting. Very, yeah, very we'll, good we'll sit at Charlevoix and, you know, watch the boats come in when, and uh, Beaver Island Ferry comes in mm-hmm. once, a, once a day when at the end of the day. So, yeah. And it's like they, they see you off and it feels so good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But hey, man, that maybe, um, you know, later on, after again, the majority of things start opening up, um, I could convince you to hop on over and get yeah. us a nice little place. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's very fun to do. Yeah. Um, so tell me, Michael, in yes. the last few minutes of our conversation together, yes, are you having? Any second thoughts that your you you know your your retirement day is coming? Uh, like, are you getting that that anxious feel of basically saying, you know what, uh, I'll, I'll I'll stay on another year? <laughs> uh, um, I'm anxious more for retirement than I am for actually saying I'm going to you know stay on another year. Mm-hmm. I had I had, had an exit plan that I had put together for myself in my head and. Uh, it was it was really going to be probably last year that I would have retired, um, but with the uh, pandemic and I thought you know this is not the right right time, time right. So I rethought it, and then I thought you know, uh, you know nine ten months into this, you know it's this is going to be a while. Yeah, um, and I started to see some things change a little bit. The vaccines came out, people were mm-hmm. re- were relaxing a little bit. Um, I think, you know, I thought it's time, there you, um, go. you know, and we talked at the beginning about old to new and not necessarily age, but, um, there, there needs to be some new eyes looking, you know, doing, mm-hmm. and I've got a wonderful group of, of directors that will be able to, you know, pick up and direct the, the new person and assist them in, in keeping up what we've created in 40 years. That's good. Um, and, uh, uh, so I'm excited um, you know, I, I've thought a little bit about consulting and, and staying within, you know, keeping dabbling in a little bit. But uh, yeah, um, yeah, you you have the knowledge that I think consulting would actually go very good. For well, you. thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, um, you know, I've been working since I was 14, 15 years old. Um, and uh, I just want to put my feet up and, you know, I, there, I've got a honeydew list. Don't, there don't, you go. <laughs> <laughs> there's a honeydew list. Um, but, uh, you know, I love to. You know, I love sports. I love going downtown and watching the Mud Hens. Maybe that'll break a little bit. Uh, you know, I want to get back out and do some you know, sportings. And, and uh, a day on the golf course with friends is, is always, uh, uh, always fun. Well, I'll, uh, I always learn something. Wow. You, 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 you've said and done it all, man. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, I, I don't know. There's probably a few other things I could do. But, uh, well, this has been very nice. This is a nice, uh, oh. a nice thing that you do. You Thank know. you. Thank oh, you. Um, he's the, pointing at you. 
as uh, as long as we can continue um, making the strides to to get more people and to keep doing things. But other than that, um, tell the people how to get in contact with you know your successor uh, Manahan if they want to um, not only review um, you know come to do touring for services or um, employment any of that. Uh, we do have a website uh, and it is manahanlife dot com. Uh, uh, because uh, we tried Manahan and that was taken, and somebody <laughs> and the person said, "Well, I'll give it to you for twenty thousand dollars." We said, eh, "I don't think yeah, so." Yeah, that's a woo. so that's uh, people are confused because my email is mmalone at manahanlife dot org. So, uh, so anytime, oh, you know, unfortunately, by ODH uh, uh, directives, we're still closed. You yeah, know, um, we're working on some admissions and doing some respites, but we have to have a protocol on how that's done. Uh, families are visiting, but uh, you know, in a in a very controlled setting. Mm-hmm. So uh, j- hopefully, something will will break. Um, maybe with the uh, uh, vaccine, people will begin to feel a little bit more comfortable. But Manahan Life uh, is our, is our website. Um, we're at one twenty South Holland, Sylvania, uh, almost at the corner of Hill and Holland, Sylvania, and uh, you know. You can give me a call or uh, um, send me an email or something, a text, whatever you'd like. And, and At least for uh, a little while. For a little while. <laughs> for a little while. Yeah. Yeah, for a little while. Well, I definitely want to say thank you very much for coming on. Um, Paul will thank you too, but he's um, predisposed to other issues at this moment. <laughs> <laughs> My camera died, people. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, hey, it he's was, still there. I yeah. see him. <laughs> <laughs> but definitely, um, again, thank you, and everyone listening, uh, we want to thank you again for another awesome podcast. Um, and you know, like, subscribe, check out. Depending on where you're watching it, look at the links for any more information uh contact us if you have any other questions if you want to get with michael and go golfing with him like i do um we'll we'll, we'll set that up when we're done there we go <laughs> <laughs> but thank you all uh, have a wonderful day be great thank you very much hey everybody thanks for watching this episode of the friends for life podcast if you can help us out go down below hit that subscribe button also if you can head over to itunes or stitcher and leave the podcast a rating or review we'd like to thank michael malone for coming on the podcast and sharing his lifetime's worth of knowledge with us and of course with all of you hope you learned something from his career and all the stuff that we talked about today and thank you for watching we will see you next time Oh, 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 oh,